What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video here on fancyfootballscout.co.uk. It is now two weeks away from the start of Premier League again in game week 17. The videos and the content will be restarting here and I'm sure in all your favourite content places. We'll be looking at game week 17. Lots to discuss as everyone is basically on a wild card. You can make unlimited transfers to your team as I'm sure you're all aware of. Today in this video we're going to be having a look at squad structure for you. We're going to look at three different drafts depending on how many premiums you want, how much money you might want to be investing into your defense as well. We've got a two premium draft, a two and a half, slightly more premium, and then a full three premium draft. Now, whether you're able to afford these, exactly how it might depend on your squad value, but some of these do have a little bit of money in the bank, so hopefully every one of you can afford these. Before we go any further, if you have not already, please make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to Fantasy Football Scout, and let's get into it. So the first draft is our two-medium draft, probably our most staple, our most template draft that we're going to have a look at today. It does, of course, have two premiums. We'll go through all of the players in this one in more detail, and then the others just tweak a few players in and around the team to allow you to free up a little bit more money to go and have those extra premiums in. In a lot of drafts, you will see it is Kepa and it is Danny Ward. Now, Kepa didn't feature in the Chelsea friendly that took place on Sunday afternoon evening, which is a slight concern with a lot of us looking to go with him as our 4.5 keeper alongside Danny Ward. I do personally think that he will be Chelsea's first choice. I'm not sure there's much doubt about that. The doubt does arise whether we think he's going to be back fit and available for game week 17. There's still two weeks to go. Eyes on the final cup matches and the press conferences when they do come around and I do think Kepa will be back fit. And of course next to him the goalkeeper who will be in all of our drafts is Danny Ward. Leicester do have a difficult first couple of games which is why we have Kepa in there as well who starts the season, starts the restart really well and then you can go and play Danny Ward in every fixture if you do want to go and do that. So our two goalkeepers in Kepa and Danny Ward are our cheap options, but I'm pretty happy with what they can offer. Moving into defense, we do have Cancelo in here. Now, some people might tell me that Cancelo is not worth the money, but I do think that Manchester City defense, given they also have two double game weeks looking to be confirmed in both game weeks 20 and game weeks 23 as well. I do think having a triple up on Manchester City is a good option and having defensive cover is a great route. And I think Cancelo is the only one in their defense who's likely to play each and every game for them. However, I even think from game week 18, 19, he'll be back starting. So with the depth that this squad have, if he isn't ready for game week 17, he'll still be back ready to play for you in the game weeks after. Trippier next again I'm pretty sure he's going to be in every draft that I see being put out on Twitter or on social media or wherever you are absorbing your content as well 5.9 million but again a lot of us have bought him at a cheaper price if you have not bought him already I still advise paying this 5.9 million price tag for him great clean sheet potential and the attacking threat is really good for him as well elsewhere in defense we've got Diego Dallo as a sort of Manchester United cover they start the restart with some really nice run of fixtures and he's been great for attacking threat and for bonus points as well which is why he is in there as my third sort of starting defender. He will look to rotate with our fourth option, which is Gabriel of Arsenal. You could go with Saliba, you could go down to the likes of Ben White as well. But for me, Gabriel at actually a slightly cheaper price than Saliba if you haven't invested in him already. Plus, he has the attacking threat over the likes of Ben White as well, and he's very nailed. There is a small doubt in my mind about whether Tommy Asu might be coming back into that Arsenal lineup occasionally, especially when they have a double game week on the horizon as well. And finally, the cheap option we've gone for is Patterson. If you have a little bit of money, you could go up to the likes of Tyron Mings in the new look Aston Villa lineup. Again, they have looked a lot better, particularly defensively, and at 4.3 million could be a really nice investment. But to save the bit of money at 4 million, we have gone with Patterson of Everton. Moving into midfield now, Pereira again, a player that we're likely to see in a lot of drafts. Playing a four-man midfield with Pereira really helps your squad structure. If you look at the bench that this draft is likely to have, it's Patterson, it's Pereira, and then it's probably one of those defenders in Dallo and Gabriel as well, playing a 3-4-3. So Pereira is likely to be very popular. He's on a lot of set pieces for Fulham. He's the second penalty taker after Mitrovic. We've seen him take them in recent games as well, and his attacking threat from open play is pretty good as well. Then we have Phil Foden. So I couldn't quite afford Kevin De Bruyne in here. If I wanted to go for three million, maybe I would go and have Kevin De Bruyne. But I did prioritize both Mo Salah and Haaland over going with Kevin De Bruyne in this team. Phil Foden, again, 
England have very sadly been knocked out of the World Cup. It does bode well for Foden being back and available for Manchester City going into game week 17. A lot of us were burnt before the break owning Phil Foden and him not getting a lot of minutes, but I do still think he could be a nice option for us over the Christmas period and into those double game weeks as well. Next in, we have Martinelli, again, a player that a lot of us have a lot of value tied up in. We haven't gone that heavy on Arsenal, but they do have some double game weeks coming up after the first few after that Christmas period, and he is a very good option. Now, without Gabriel Jesus lining up for Arsenal, it is a slight doubt about who's exactly going to play where. It's likely to be in Ketty up front and Martinelli out on the left-hand side, but there's a very small chance that it is Martinelli that leads the line, and then Smith Rowe goes out on that left-hand side. Either of those being the case, I still think that 6.8 price tag is very nice for Martinelli. And next one we have Kulisevsky. Now, Richarlison, Harry Kane have both gone deep into the World Cup. They've both been knocked out now though and Son looks like he's back and available after his facial injury which took place at the end of the sort of first part of the season. However, Kulisevsky is so key to the way they link the play. I do think the way he played in game weeks 15 and 16 will mean that he is likely to retain his place in that Tottenham lineup. Again, he has not played any part in the World Cup. So although Son, Richarlison and Kane are all back and can be available for selection, they do have have a lot of minutes and a lot of that mental strain as well, which Kulisevsky doesn't happen to have. He does help to cover that Tottenham attack, which will be highly earned in the likes of Harry Kane as well. And then finally, we have Mo Salah in here. Again, I did just want a piece of that Liverpool attack. It does look like Luis Diaz is going to be out for a fair while, so I don't expect that much rotation and Salah likely to be on penalties as well. Up front, Haaland is in there. We don't need to discuss him too much. He's had the full break. He's certain to be in all of our drafts as well. Mitrovic is next up. Again, Again, a double game week in game week 19 against Chelsea, which means he gets the nod for me over some of those other mid price forwards that you could be deciding to go with. And then finally, we've got Wilson as my Newcastle attack. I could have gone with Almiron, but I prefer to play three forwards and not have to have that cheap 4.2 million forward up front who's not going to play it. With Isaac potentially being back, I do think there's a little bit of doubt exactly how they line up, but Wilson is so clinical that I don't see him being the one that drops out of that Newcastle attack. So this is my Tumium. It's just so well balanced. You have that premium defender in Cancelo. You have those cheap midfielders and the likes of Martinelli and Andreas. You have mid-price midfielders in Kulisevsky. You have more expensive options in like Salah and Haaland and then you cover the mid-price forwards as well. So it is a very template team. It does cover all of the bases and it is a team that I think will be very popular going into game week 17. Next up is the two and a half medium, the sort of two premium draft with a bit of a spicy touch on the top, and that is Darwin. Again, with Luis Diaz being out, it does look like Darwin, having been knocked out of the World Cup in the group stage, is going to be back fit. I do expect him to be pretty nailed now that there's no Luis Diaz. It does mean that three of the four, including Firmino, Jota, Diaz, and Mo Salah are likely to play every single game. Darwin showed in game weeks 15 and 16 how clinical he can be in front of goal. What this has meant in terms of the tweaks we've had to make to this team, I have dropped Mo Salah to go and get Kevin De Bruyne. I've then also gone and dropped Phil Foden as well. I do like the likes of Kevin De Bruyne linking up with Erling Haaland. Again, De Bruyne being knocked out of the World Cup very early. I do like what he can offer and how well I think Manchester City will do after the break. If you did want to go and have a look at getting Mo Salah back in for Kevin De Bruyne, the money is pretty equal there is a bit of spare cash in the bank and you could easily go and do that as well. We've had to go and downgrade. Of course, there's no Wilson in this one, which means we've gone with Miguel Almiron as our midfielder as well. The little bit of money that we have freed up by selling Mo Salah all the way down to likes of Miguel Almiron and not completely investing it, we have gone and got Reese James in our defence as well over having Gabriel as our Arsenal defensive cover. Reese James isn't fully fit yet for Chelsea, but I see a lot of talk about people potentially wanting to go and buy him and those Chelsea nice fixtures they do have in game week 17 and 18 could be a real chance that Reese James could haul. I would offer a word of caution if you are going to go and buy the likes of Reese James or Ben Chilwell. I do expect them to be eased in. As a Chelsea fan, we are not the same without Chilwell, without Reese James in our side. I think Graham Potter will not want to race them in, particularly first games back, that Christmas busy schedule from Boxing Day to New Year. I don't see these guys playing more than two out of those three games. And then finally, here we have that three-meal draft. So we have Salah, we have De Bruyne, and we have Erling Haaland as well. So in order to free up the money, we have had to sell Kepa and just go for the Danny Ward and Iverson double up. I don't mind that at all, actually, and there is a chance, even if I don't go three-meal, that I just go with that. I do think Leicester look good defensively. I don't necessarily think owning Kepa is that worth it, although with the likes of Chilwell, Reese James, and Fafana all returning, they should look a lot better defensively over the next couple of weeks. 
Again, we've had to go with only two up front. So Callum Wilson has been downgraded effectively to go and get Miguel Amaron in. That has freed up a lot of money and that has basically allowed us to go and get Salah, De Bruyne and Haaland. The last change, a very small thing, is we had to go with Ben White over Gabriel just to free up that final little bit of money. If you have a great team value, you might be able to go with Gabriel. You might be able to go with Kepa in your goal as well. But this is hopefully a draft that everyone watching can afford. And if you have the spare money, then feel free to upgrade everywhere or elsewhere in this team if you do want. So we've gone through, we've got a two premium draft. We've got a two premium draft with an expensive option in like Darwin. We've then got this three premium draft as well. But the issue with this one, there is an issue with them all. This one again has that no sort of seven to nine million pound player in either the forward line or the midfielders as well. Let me know what you think of these three drafts. Which squad structure are you planning on going with? Is anyone actually considering going with a back four, for example? I don't really think it's worth it. We haven't had enough high explosive defenders. A lot of them are quite cheap, like we've got in here with the likes of Dallo, Ben White, that you can rotate in and out of your lineup. But yeah, let me know which of these you plan on going on. It is great to be back recording FPL content as well. If you're enjoying being back, starting to think about your FPL team, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video as well if you are enjoying the FPL content returning. Good luck with your tinkering. I'll be back again with one more video before game week 17 here. I'll also be uploading plenty of videos over on my channel as well. So if you haven't checked out my channel, it is FPL Harry on YouTube. There are links in the description. There should be a link up above as well. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your tinkering. Enjoy the rest of the World Cup and I'll be back again very soon.